In this video, I want to show you four different ways that you can group your data in Power BI without writing any DAX at all. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways like using Power Query, using some AI techniques and um, using bins and buckets. And we're also going to briefly cover how you can make sure that your groupings are sorted in the right order that you want them. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand. And welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So grouping your data is a fairly common requirement when you're working with data with a large range. You might want to visualize this in a kind of in a smaller format grouped or binned in certain buckets, summarizing them in groups so that you can easily analyze this uh, large set of data into smaller chunks. And today I'm going to show you how you can do this fairly easily in Power BI. The first few ways that I'm going to show you is in Power Query, which is where you transform and clean your data before you load it into your Power BI report. So here we're going to start with our typical model, the Northwind data sets. So I've already got some tables and columns that we're going to work with. I'm not going to go through the details of what the what it's for, but because that's probably out of the scope for this video. So let's have a look, first of all, in the order details table here, which is a list of all the different orders that were made for this company. Each row is a list of various orders and the various products that were ordered in those orders. So these are IDs. So they could be, I don't know, mangoes or pencils, whatever they may be. The price, the unit price for each of those products and the quantity of those products that were ordered. Now, as it is at the moment, as you can see, there's quite a lot of orders here. And one of the things that you might want to know is, you know, the typical quantity that is ordered, but you want to see how many were ordered in those quantities. Uh, you might want to group the quantity into, in, into groups. So like any products that were ordered between 0 to 10, 11 to 20, etc., etc. So one of the ways that you can group this is by creating a column that groups these values into kind of these buckets. And to do that, we need to create a new column that does exactly that. So it just groups all of those quantities into those buckets that we want. So to do that, we're going to just go to the add column ribbon here and we're going to click conditional column which will bring up this window here that lets us add some logic to create those groupings. So I'm just going to check change quantity here and I'm going to do if quantity is less than or equals to 10 and I'm going to say then this is 0 to 10 and you can add as many clauses as you want. So we're just going to add a few more. So if it's less than or equals to 20, then we'll say 11 to 20. Then we'll add one last one just to show you and it's less than or equals to 30, 21 to 30. And then I'm going to say else 31 and above. So now what it will do is if I hit OK, you will see that now it's created a column that creates a grouping for each of those quantities in each of those rows in this order details table. So 0 to 10, 0 to 10, 31 and above, 11 to 20. Now from here, you can just load this to your data and then visualize your groupings there. Or if you want to view it here in Power Query, you can go group by. And then you can just say group it by custom. And then we just want to count how many rows there are for each of those grouping. If you hit OK, you will see that it will show you how many orders for each of those different quantity types. So pretty easy, right? However, you know, creating conditional columns still takes a bit of time. So you might want to make this process a little bit simpler. So maybe uh, using an AI might help you do this a lot in a lot more easier fashion. So in Power Query, you can use this feature called column from examples, which uses AI to kind of find what type of data you're trying to get from your table. So let's have a look at this in an example. So here we are in the orders table. Now this table has just two columns, the order and the order date. So each of these order dates are when those orders were made and they are different dates in a year. 
And we might want to group this by month because you kind of aren't too interested in specific dates. We just want to know which month has the highest order, for example, instead of having to scroll through all of these and trying to count them manually. So what you can do instead of having to create a conditional column to create all of those months and years to group them, you can go to add column and column from examples. And what it will do is it will add this column one here and it lets you add add sample values in each of these rows. So basically, these are just suggestions that you can give to the AI, and it will try to find out what you're actually trying to get from the data that you have. So I'm just going to re redo the, the AI here, and I've just made sure that I tick the order date only so that it tries to find the pattern just from that column. So now we're just looking at the order date by itself, right? So now we want to just make sure that we adjust these August 1996. Here we go. So now it's recognized that we are trying to get the month and the dates from this order date column. As you can see here, it now understands, okay, I need to get September here, October, November, pretty easily, right? So with just a few suggestions. So if you now hit OK, it will add that grouping column, which you can now use to group your data. So now let's hit close and apply and let's try to visualize this into your model into the report. So when you're grouping dates or just grouping values in general, when you need to visualize them into your Power BI reports, their ordering tend or can tend to be a little bit unpredictable in a way that it will always try to follow what your data type is and it will order it alphabetically or numerically based on what that grouping is. So at the moment, when we've created that grouping, we've used month and year. So if we put the order date, sorry, the grouping that we've just created, and let's say we want to count how many orders there are, and then we just change this to count. As you can see, if I sort or try to sort this by clicking the custom column header here, it will order this alphabetically, not chronologically, which is what you would normally expect. And that's because this custom column that we've just created is a text format. So if it preserved the format type that it originally was, which is date type column, this would be ordering in a chronological date order. One of the ways that you can group your data while preserving its original data type is by creating bins directly into your data model. So so let's take another example here, which is the calendar table that I've just generated here. If I just show you the calendar table, it's just a list of all the dates between 1996 and 1998. And let's say we want to just group this into months the same way that we wanted the order, order dates to have been. So to do that quite easily, you can just right click on the dates column that you want to group and then click new group here. And from here, you will have a few options. So we're just going to name it month and we're going to just choose the grouping type as bin for now and set the bin type as the size of bins. So we just want to control the size of bins by just giving it a grouping of one month. But you can change this into different things like three months if you want to do quarters or years if you wanted to. There are various things here that you can customize. But for now, we're going to leave it to months. And what it's going to do if I hit OK? is as you can see, it's generated at, as that new column that groups this uh, date by month and year, the same way that we did the order dates. On the right hand side, you will see that it has this, this little icon next to the month. That means that is a, a bin type column. And if we bring this into the page here, if I try to sort this, you will see that it's sorting chronologically, like what you would expect it to be sorted by. So it's not just dates that you can bin as well. You have some other options like you can bin numbers or even text if you wanted to. So let's go to the order details and let's try to create a bin for the quantity. Let's create a new group here and let's just explore a few different things here. So as you can see now, the bin size is, is different. So now it's showing us Four because it's now a numerical type column. So if we just create a bin like this for now, let's just visualize how that looks like. So just remember, we left it as four and we just count the orders for each of those. So what it does at the moment is it creates those binnings 
with a size of 4. So 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12. That number controlled how many values you have in each of those groups so that they're equally distributed. If we go and hit the edit group option in the bin that we've just created, you can change that size into something else if you want less groupings. If you want to control how many actual groups there are in your bins, you can choose the number of bins as the bin type instead. So I will give you a suggestion 26, um, which will give you about four for each of these uh, bins. But let's say we just want to group this into five equal sizes. So if you hit OK now, you will see that it will just do that for you. So it will give you five different um, groupings. I mean, it will create those sizes for you. So 1 to 26.7, vice versa, vice versa. So this grouping is pretty interesting. However, what it shows you in these bins is the start of the bin, but it doesn't always show you what is the range of it, which you might want to show if you are creating some bins like this. You might want to show if this is the grouping 1 to 25, 26 to 51 as the kind of the format of the bins themselves. So what you can do is you can create a bin, a list in this bin and create manually adjust where those values go to in each of those groupings. So we're going to create a new grouping under the quantity just so that we can show them uh, side by side. And now instead of choosing bin, we're going to use list instead. So what it will do is it will give you all the possible values that currently exists in your column. And then from here, you can create a grouping for yourself. So let's say we'll select one to 10 here. We're going to create a group for each of these. We're going to call this one to 10. And then we're going to create a group again for 11 to 20, 11 to 20. So you can create as many groups as you want and everything else that is ungrouped will be lumped into this other grouping. So if you hit okay from here, it will just create us another group. And as you can see, there we go. So it will give you 1 to 10, 11 to 20, et cetera, et cetera. And it lets you kind of adjust how those groups are being shown. Now, this method is really good because it lets you customize how your bins are being shown. However, one of the issues that you might find when you're using this is that the data that you're showing in this list needs to exist before you can bin them. So if there are any values that didn't exist before, so for example, if I just hit edit here just to show you, no, nope, it's not edit. So you will see in the 11 to 20 grouping, we don't have the full range of the quantity. 17 is not here as well as 19. If uh, there are any orders that are made in 17 or 19 in quantity, instead of being grouped into this 11 or 20, it, they will be grouped in this other category, which they shouldn't be. They should be part of the 11 to 20, but we didn't have any logic to say it needs to be greater than or equals to 11 or less than 20. So if they don't exist currently and and you want to group them like this, you need to re-edit those groups in the future and just put those values in the right buckets. Another thing is, again, because this grouping is in text formats, it will try to sort it alphabetically. So you won't have full control over how it's sorted, which can be a little bit annoying at times. So now I'm going to show you my preferred method. It's a little bit longer than uh, using these and possibly a little bit more rudimentary. But for me, it lets me control, you know, how my values are being grouped with, with a finer detail, basically. And this is by using a mapping table. So let's take the same example of trying to group the quantities here. And what I've done just to save us some time is I've created already a mapping table and a mapping table looks like this. So what it is, is a list of in this first row, for example, the list of all the potential values that you can get in your data. So at the moment it's up to one to 130. The second column is the grouping. So how you want these values to be grouped at. So I just created a, a sample grouping here. 1 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, et cetera, et cetera. And then the key thing to ensure that our sorting is in the right order is using this order column. So this order column lets us say that, you know, the grouping needs to start with the 1 to 30 and it needs to, the next one needs to be 31 to 60. And this is one of the ways that you can customize the order of your groupings in Power BI. So I'm going to show you how you can use this. So we're going to just copy it. 
we're gonna go to Power Query here in Power BI Desktop. We're gonna enter data. I'm just gonna enter it like this. I'm just gonna call it quantity. Well, we're just gonna call it grouping. And then we're just gonna adjust a few things like changes into whole numbers. We're gonna disable it because we don't really need to load it. We just need to merge it. You can use merge or you can create a relationship. For this one, I just, I prefer the merge at least for these orders, just because it's a lot simpler. So we're gonna go to groupings and then link these two by the quantity. So what I will do is if I hit okay and expand that, grouping and order, it will add those groupings that we need for us. Perfect. So from here, what we need to do is hit close and apply. I'm just going to make some space for it. Under the order details, we just need to make sure that when you select grouping, you change the sort by column to the order. Now it makes sure that the grouping is always sorted in the right way that we want. So 1 to 30, 31 to 60, etc. etc. So now all you need to do is just do whatever you want, summarize however you, uh, whatever you want in your data. Now it gives you those count of orders in those groupings from the mapping table sorted in the right order. And that's really it. So those were some of the ways that you can group your data in Power BI without writing a single line of DAX code. Now, if you're using Power BI, you really should learn how to use DAX because it opens up a lot of new and simpler possibilities on how you can group your data. So using the group by function, the switch, or even the summarize function, which will make a lot of these groupings a far simpler task to do. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.